Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today we are doing a team selection video for Game Week 24 slash wildcard video because you guys, you probably should know, I am very, very likely to be on a wild card come the Game Week 24 deadline. I'm like 90% sure on this on this thing. So I am going to show you my wild card draft that I absolutely love right now. And of course, we're going to go through my scores from last game week, some, some captaincy thoughts and a little bit of chip strategy and future transfer planning thoughts as well. All to come in this video, guys. So if you do enjoy what you see today, please do leave a like. Massively appreciated. And do subscribe if you are new around here too. But without further ado... Let's have a look and see how I got on in game week 23. So here we have my game week 23 scores. Uh, as you can see, I scored 24 points, which takes me from 250th down to 482nd in one game week. So that means in game week 22, I was ranked 28th in the world, and now I'm all the way down to 482nd. Thanks in part to captaining a player who got a red card in the first game week of a double game week. And out of the rest of my players, pretty much every single player blanked until Ben Foster somehow rescued me with a clean sheet on a, a day two weeks after the start of the game week, which was kind of crazy. I've never been so grateful for, for a Ben Foster clean sheet in my life, which is quite mad. So I really only have myself to blame. I've obviously made some tragic transfers in recent weeks, you know, putting faith in players like Dennis and ESR and Antonio and a Sterling, who was never really going to be a long-term option. Um, Tommy Asu, who I really thought was going to be available for this game week, well, game week 23, and he suddenly got a bit of an injury that just kind of came out of nowhere. And what on earth was I thinking bringing in Lucas the game week before as well? Larice, why have I got him? I mean, I'm looking at my team and I've just clearly just made a, a bunch of bad decisions when it comes to transfers. So all in all, it makes me an absolute clown, an absolute fraud. And that is why I've humiliated myself like this in a YouTube video because I deserve it for the worst game week I have probably ever had in the history of me playing FPL. And I am so sorry to have done this to you. What have I done? <laughs> so it's no surprise really that this team needs some serious surgery. I need to anti-clown myself, get my clown face off and start thinking positively about the future and how I can push on. I'm still in a really good position, but I can't keep falling like this. We need to refresh the team. We need to go again. We need to pick some excellent players and we need to still try and compete for top 100, if not number one in the world. We can still do it but we've got to stop being a clown. Oh, so with that out of the way, um, let's do game week 24. You guys know I'm on a wild card. Let me show you exactly how I'm setting up to try and make the best of the situation that I'm in right now. Obviously, my team needs a complete refresh. How are we going to do that? Well, let's start. Just, just run through the players and I'll talk a little bit about my strategy uh, as we go through. But we'll start off in goal with De Gea, uh, 5.2 million. He's a really, really probably the best goalkeeper to have right now. I, I feel like if I didn't have De Gea and if you guys don't have De Gea, you're probably going to be a little bit bit fearful this double game week in game week 25 Southampton and Brighton looks really good for Manchester United now I'm not necessarily saying they'll keep two clean sheets in that but what we can see with De Gea is that he makes a lot of saves and he doesn't even need a clean sheet to collect bonus points to collect save points and all that jazz so he could be on for a really nice score I would not be surprised if he got 10 plus points in uh, in game week 25 so I do want him ready for then but also this Burnley game looks good for him he's got leads in game week 26 as well and game week 27 where a lot of kind of players do not have fixtures in game week 27 he's got a nice fixture against Watford there a Watford that we're kind of expecting to be a little bit more you know a little bit more within themselves a little bit more defensive under the stewardship of Roy Hodgson so yeah I think this goalkeeper is just the one to go for right now but I might have another backup goalkeeper on the bench as well which we'll talk about when we get to my bench but going in onto defense we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold that's just not a surprise really it doesn't matter if you are wild card and you're not wild carding you're making transfers everyone has got Trent everyone should have Trent everyone should always have Trent never remove Trent he is like the key player in FPL right he should never leave your team and he never has once left my team and I, I intend to keep it that way I've got a lot of value tied up in him bought him obviously at 7.5 million at the beginning of the season he's now 8.5 million so absolutely crazy stuff there so uh, yeah he he's going to stay in the team but something that is a little bit different 
in the, this defense is that I'm going to double up and go for Andy Robertson here. So we're going to double up on the Liverpool defense. Obviously, they both got Leicester this game week. After that, a nice fixture against Burnley. So we'd probably be looking for clean sheets. But we've got this double game week against Norwich and Leeds. Both home games. And I feel like... That is, a, there's a lot of clean sheets in here, but when I kind of look at Trent and Robertson at the moment, they're, they're, so, they're so good for attacking returns, you know, particularly against this Leicester team who are expecting to concede a few goals against Liverpool. Just to have that attacking nous of Trent and Robertson on the pitch at the same time is going to be really, really beneficial. And this double up in, in the double game week as well is just going to be phenomenal. You guys will have heard me say before, and I kind of stick by this. I think the ideal Liverpool triple up, when, Sal when Salah comes back anyway, the ideal Liverpool triple up is going to be Trent, Robertson and and Salah. Those three players are going to be the guys you kind of want to take through to the end of the season. So because we're wildcarding now, we've not got another wildcard to use later on in the season. We've got all our, well, I've personally got all of my other chips anyway, so that's not a problem. And um, we can free hit at various stages later on in the season. But for now, we're going to go for the, for the double Liverpool defence, Trent and Robertson, throwing that money in there and hopefully they're going to bang with some serious points. And we've got Cancelo who's going to finish off the defence here. He's got some phenomenal fixtures, Brentford, Norwich uh, and then Everton in a few game weeks time as well. So another player with really nice fixtures. He's another player who has pretty much been in my team since, I don't know, I think very early in the season, kind of like game week four or something like that. He's gone up in price a lot as well. And he's kind of considered an essential FPL asset as well at the moment. So yeah, definitely a player that you want to have in a wildcard team. You know, Trent and Cancelo should be two of the first names on your team sheet when you're making your wildcard draft for sure. A lot of the other players are a little bit more optional, but certainly Cancelo. Um, yeah, I can't imagine doing a wildcard draft without him. I really can't but here's a new player let's get let's, let's find another new player uh, into midfield and we have got Kevin De Bruyne a player who I think is going to be I'm not even joking I think over the next two game weeks he's going to be the top uh, top scoring FPL player over the next couple of game weeks even if you consider that you know United have a double game week Brentford, uh, Brentford Brighton have a double game week I think De Bruyne over the next two will outscore all Man United and Brighton players there you go. I've said it. I've said it. Because because look at these City fixtures. They're incredible. De Bruyne is in such good form right now. He's doing absolute bits in all competitions as well. And I'm just feeling really confident about this one. I think he's the number one captain choice for uh, game week 24. You know, he's even a shout for, for captaincy in game week 25. If you haven't got a lot of Manchester United players, he really is. So, um, yeah, I, I'm so, so keen on this one. Really, really am keen on getting De Bruyne. And he's one of the reasons, actually, why I was so keen to wildcard is because I did want that perfect captain option for game week 24. And that's exactly what we've got now. So, uh, yeah, really, really pleased with this pick indeed. And also, he's a great placeholder for Mo Salah. Now, those of you guys who have been following AFCON will know that Salah has played four games of 120 minutes. So he's gone to extra time in his last four games at the AFCON. He has played a stupid amount of football. And it is really, really doubtful that Salah is going to be straight back into the Liverpool team. I just can't see it happening. Like, I'm sure a lot of you guys can't see it happening as well. No player is capable of playing that many minutes all in a row, all within the space of, I think it was something like 10 or 11 days. He's played, what was that, 480 minutes of professional football in African conditions. And he's going to come back and play for Liverpool against Leicester just a couple of days after that don't be crazy it can't happen surely so certainly for for this game week possibly for the next two game weeks De Bruyne is gonna be in this team to play against Brentford and Norwich really really happy about that as a as, a, as the ideal placeholder really I think he is the ideal placeholder I prefer him as a placeholder to uh, Bruno Fernandes for example so yeah, really happy with this one. Uh, next, I've got Madison, a player who I think is going to be uh, pretty pretty good for the long term. So this is slightly more of a long term pick. And when you look through these fixtures, obviously, we've got Liverpool this game week, West Ham next game week, Wolves the game week after. We're not actually going to be playing Madison every single game week because we are going to be rotating Madison with some of the double game week players. And Madison is more of a long term pick because we know Leicester have a lot of games to be rescheduled. And you see there's a blank there in game week 27. Well, actually, it kind of looks like the Burnley versus Leicester game may be rescheduled to that uh, that game week. So get in, into game week 27, which will mean that Leicester do actually have a fixture in a game week 27 as well, which will be really, really good, actually, because that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a real benefit, especially if we're going for a lot of Liverpool players. We need that bit of cover in game week 27 there. So that's going to be good. After that, 
Leicester will still have three more double game weeks guaranteed between, uh, you know, game week 28 and the end of the season. Three and more double game weeks at some point. Uh, some much better fixtures as well from game week 28 onwards. So Madison is going to become a really, really important player in FPL at some point. So I'm kind of preempting it a little bit because I know I haven't got another wild card to try and panic Madison in at a later date. Let's just get him in now and just fill one of those slots. A slot which, to be fair, would be mostly on the bench for the next few game weeks anyway. So let's get ahead of the game here. Uh, we've got Jared Bowen, another player who has stayed. He stays in the team. He is not going anywhere. Don't care what you say. He's still incredible. I think he's an absolute legend. He's so good at footy. And look at these fixtures. Watford, Leicester, Newcastle. Three teams who have conceded a lot of goals um, over the course of the season, haven't they? A lot of goals. Uh, you know, particularly Watford and Leicester, you would say, have been some of the worst defences in the league over recent, you know, recent weeks, recent months. So Jared Bowen is hopefully going to absolutely dominate in those games. So even though he hasn't got a double game week, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me. I think he will outscore a lot of the double game week players just through the form that he's kind of in at the moment. And, you know, I just think he's a he's just this star attacker for West Ham. We saw that in the FA Cup as well. He's the guy who got the goal, wasn't he? So uh, the goal at the end. So, yeah, all in all, Bowen fantastic attacking player and a player you definitely got to have uh, we've got Rafinha next which is kind of an interesting one I do love Rafinha and again this one is kind of in a way planning for the future he's got a couple of okay games you'll see we've got that Everton game in game week 25 that we can look forward to uh, which might be pretty nice I think but the double game week even though it's against Manchester United and Liverpool I still kind of do back Rafinha in that double game week so not only is he kind of a long-term plan but he's got some he's got a couple of good game weeks in the near future he's got that double game week in game week 26 so he's as an additional double game week player and uh, after that the fixtures do look really good particularly after the Tottenham game and the double game week Manchester United and Liverpool I really don't think it's that bad I honestly think there's more 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 than a chance of Leeds getting something from one of those games um and if, if Leeds are going to get something from one of those games, who's it going to be? It's going to be Rafinha. We know Rafinha is going to play all the minutes as well. So that's kind of four points guaranteed. You know, he only needs like a dodgy penalty and Rafinha can kind of, uh, you know, score a penalty maybe. And, you know, suddenly you're laughing and suddenly you've got a really, really, really nice score there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to roll the dice with Rafinha on a double game week. Not perfect fixtures. But you never know. You've got two chances there. And we've seen Rafinha do it against the big teams uh, as well, haven't we, so far this season? So why not again? Why not again? Let's uh, let's roll the dice on that one. And finally, we've got a bit of a differential in Elise in midfield. So 5.4 million, 0.2% owned, fantastic fixtures. Norwich-Brentford, then the double game week against Chelsea and Watford in game week 26. And then a game against Burnley in game week 27. So phenomenal fixtures, a double game week, in there as well but why why is nobody getting Elise why is why is this a, why is this such a strange pick 0.2% ownership no one owns this player 5.4 million that can't be that good of a player if he's so cheap well let me tell you guys go and watch some clips of Elise recently he is on absolute fire he is like untouchable right now and he is without a doubt the form player of Crystal Palace right now so if you're going for a Crystal Palace player now I imagine a lot of you guys do want to invest in the Crystal Palace attack right now Elise is definitely one that is looking really really good to go for he plays on that right wing I think he's going to displace are you there hopefully kind of permanently with the form that he's in he's a young really uh, promising talent he hasn't been playing too much so far this season because he's had a lot of injury problems but he is back now he was bought in the summer to be uh, a lot of money to be in this Crystal Palace side he's got a wicked uh, future ahead of him this guy uh, honestly he is so good and uh, I, I think you guys are going to see just how good he is so gonna try and predict the future a little bit here I'm going to try and predict that Elise is going to be the next big FPL asset that we are all talking about. I'm going to take the punt. I'm going to go for him. Feeling good about this one. I really like this uh, differential to go for. It is spicy. I love a bit of spice. Let's move on to our forward positions. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, now, does this move kind of fill me with confidence? Not really. Uh, not really, to be honest. He is a player who I definitely don't think is worth the 12.5 million that he is. But he's got an okay fixture against Burnley. And then he's got a double game week against Southampton and Brighton. So it's that, it's that factor of trying to get in a, a couple of double game weeks for game week 25 as well as 26. Ronaldo is kind of that guy. But what, even though, uh, you know, he's not the perfect player. When I kind of look through the stats of Manchester United, 
Ronaldo is still number one on all underlying stats. He really is. You know, he's, he's, he's the most likely to score goals. He's got a decent assist potential as well. Kind of head and shoulders above any of his other teammates. He's the most likely player to be playing most uh, a lot of minutes, you know, we expect him to play a lot more minutes than maybe a Rashford or uh, an Alanga or a Sancho, for example. So I think it's a safe pick, a, a, pre, a pretty good pick, a, a pick that is, you know, is certainly better than going for a more pay or someone like that for the double, right? So I think it's pretty good. I think the kind of worst case scenario is a three or four pointer, but I would not be surprised if he scores one goal across the two games as well. So I think it could be pretty good just for this short term. Um, but after that, I am very much kind of in a way using him as a placeholder for Harry Kane, who is a player who's in great form right now. And Harry Kane is a player I want to bring in for the game week 26 double. So just like I'm moving De Bruyne in game week 26 to Salah, I'll be moving Ronaldo to Kane in 26 as well. So those two players, well, the two premiums I have will switch to two other premiums, two premiums that have double game weeks in 26. So that will be really, really nice to have now two big players uh, ready for that double game week as well. And actually players I kind of want to keep for the long term as well. Salah, we're definitely going to be looking to keep him from, uh, you know, game in 26 at the, uh, at the latest, right of the way until the end of the season. That's for sure. And Ronaldo will be, uh, will be looking to switch to Kane. Kane is a player that we'll probably be looking to keep for a little while as well, When uh, particularly when uh, Spurs' fixtures are, are looking pretty good, which they are looking okay, actually, from uh, sort of game week 26 onwards. And they've got a couple of double game weeks that should be rescheduled at some point or another as well. Um, overall, I think Spurs are looking a, 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 a team where you maybe should invest a little bit in. One defender, one attacker, something like that. I do think you should maybe try and look to get one player in and... And Kane has just been impressing me recently. I, I can't lie. I'm ready to get hurt again. Don't get me wrong. But uh, um, yeah, he's just he's just looked really good. He's been actually showing some really decent form. And I think we're very quick to forget how good of a player he actually is. But Kane does have so much behind him, so much backing him up to suggest that actually he's going to absolutely fly. Uh, and, or, or he can absolutely fly, particularly when we're kind of under a much better manager, a team that's really wanted to get into the top four uh, in the Premier League as well. It's going to be a big end of the season for Spurs. And you imagine Kane will be an enormous, enormous part of that. And we're going to finish off the attack here with uh, Odson Edouard. So we're doubling up on the Crystal Palace attack. And I, I, to be honest, I'm trying not, I'm trying not to think of it of, as doubling up. I'm, I'm kind of looking at both players individually as two individual players I'd quite like to have. You know, there is not really too many other midfielders I'd like around Elise's price. There's not really too many other forwards I'd like around Edouard's price. Those two are my favourites of their price point in their position. So it makes perfect sense to just have both of them. If I'd be happy to have one or the other, then why am I not happy to have both of them? Answer, I am. So slight concerns about Edouard's minutes. I mean, a few people think he's going to rotate with uh, Mateta maybe at the striker position or Zaha maybe at the left wing position. But I do think if we look over the course of the season, even when everyone's been fit, everyone's been available, Edouard has been pretty much a constant in the team. He's only not started a few games all season. So, you know, it's not a real concern that we think, oh my word, he's such a rotation risk. I don't think he's a rotation risk as well. He's in incredible form. He has some of the best underlying stats in the Premier League. I think only, uh, I think it's Kane and Bowen have better kind of X predicted XG per game at the moment. So in terms of taking shots, getting in good positions to shoot, big chances, shots in the box, stuff like that. Edouard is really, really super, super up there, you know, third place in the entire Premier League right now. So that's enormous. Great fixtures again, as we've kind of spoken about. Really kind of like the looks of this a lot. So let's go on to my bench here. We've got Aaron Ramsdale. So that's our, that's our goalkeeper for game week 26. Obviously, De Gea is going to be 24-25. Game week 26, uh, obviously, Arsenal will have a really good double game week against Brentford and Wolves. So, potential two clean sheets there, you know. So, that could be pretty good. We've got Broya as a nice bench option just because he's super cheap. And I think he's going to be, uh, you know, Southampton's star striker for the rest of the season, really. Uh, I think, uh, in particular, Southampton have a really nice fixture in 27. We've got Ike Nori. They've got double game week against Arsenal and someone else. Can't remember now. Um, <laughs> I should have written it down probably. But yeah, uh, Wolves also have a double game week and Wolves have a really nice fixture swing from, I think it's game week 28 onwards. Their fixtures just look really, really incredible. So we'd be looking to 
play our Wolves defenders a lot. I think Ait Nori is pretty nailed and he also possesses a lot of attacking threat. He's a really attacking kind of left wing back. And we've got Veltman as well, who's going to be coming in for Brighton's double game week um, when Brighton come in um, and have their double game week in game week 25. So that's when he'll come in and then we'll have... You know, we'll have two players. That'll be Watford and uh, Watford and Man United will be the Brighton double game week. So they'll come in, this one Brighton player, and we'll have three players, De Gea, Veltman and Ronaldo for game week 25. You'll notice I haven't gone super heavy in game week 25, but I think that's okay because I think it's in a way a little bit of a trap double game week because the two teams, remember, who have got double game week are Man United and Brighton. Two kind of pretty trolly teams, to be honest, and teams that we probably don't want to have their players for the long term. And you guys, we've got to think about the long term when we're talking about our our wild cards, to be honest, and that's exactly what we're doing here. But yeah, guys, this team basically allows us to have nine double game week players in game week 26, three double game week players in game week 25, if, if you include the transfers that I'll be making. And then in game week 27, because we have only one Arsenal player and it's a goalkeeper, and we will at that point have three Liverpool players, Trent, Robertson and Salah, those three players can go to the bench in game week 27 as long as there's no injuries, although we will have a, an extra transfer at that point to deal with any injuries or anything that come up uh, by game week 27 as well. Anyway, uh, we should, in theory, have a full 11 for game week 27, so we won't need a free hit then either. So overall, this is actually looking really good. We can, we've can we got plenty of double game week players. We can completely cover that game week 27 without needing a free hit. And everything is amazing. And then from then, I won't talk about it too much now, but then we can start to commit to looking to, you know, maximise our bench boost in game week 36. Is it bench boost 36? I think so. Game week 36 should be the big double game week. You know, I haven't got, I haven't got my game week planner written down. It's in all of my videos other than this one, apparently. But you guys can go check that out on my Twitter or on my other videos or whatever you like uh, if you want to plan your chips. But this is not about the future chip use. This is about the team. And this is my wildcard team. Those are my future transfer plans in terms of getting Kane in and getting Salah in. I really kind of like the look of this, but there may be a little bit more tinkering between now and the end of, uh, well, by the time we, the deadline comes along. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like and don't forget to subscribe as well if you haven't done already. Especially, you need to like the video for the makeup, right? I mean, that's that's an absolute given. Um, for any final changes I make to this team, I will obviously be streaming tomorrow on Tuesday on deadline day. We'll do a deadline stream. I might even do an, a, another slightly earlier stream as well, just so we've got two streams for the earlier crowd and we can maybe have a chat about some other stuff um, in, in the first in the first stream maybe and then do something more deadline-y in the deadline stream. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I'll let you guys know on Twitter, I imagine. Uh, but there you go, guys. Thanks again once again for watching and I will see you tomorrow on the deadline stream. See you later, mates. Bye-bye.